All right, gamers, how's it going? It is 10 pie time, and I know a lot of people have been dreading this. I, however, have been quite excited. I quite like the deck, and I might make it even another video just talking about how I don't even think it's that bad for the game. I think a lot of people are saying this deck is like really bad for the game. I kind of see it differently, but anyway, I'm not going to get into that right now. I do like the deck a lot. Today, I played quite a bit of it. I went from uh, Master 5, uh, sorry, I mean Diamond 5, all the way to Master 5, uh, just to make sure I get some decent experience with the deck, you know, and at least know what I'm talking about. I had practiced it prior, but I wanted to make sure that I know what I'm doing and that I like my list in the actual game before dropping, you know, a super early, like, first five minutes deck profile. So uh, here it is. This is my list. I'm playing more of a balance of different hand traps and board breakers. Overall, I think the list is really solid. The only thing I would really change is like if I had a second reboot, I'd probably run a second one. But honestly, I don't know what I'd remove yet for it. Now, I'm going to be doing a card by card towards the end of the video. But I suppose uh, this might be an introduction to Tenpai for a lot of people. Don't want to spend too much time on it because the deck is quite straightforward when it comes down to it. Essentially, with Tenpai, you're trying to hand trap your opponent and board break your opponent so that you can just slip in and do your somewhat linear line of just going either Sangin Summoning or Pydra to fetch the Chundra. Uh, Chundra in the battle phase, if it declares an attack, can special summon another Tenpai monster from your deck. And uh, all your Tenpais, except for again Roku, can quick effect Synchro Summon during the battle phase. So the whole idea basically getting into the battle phase, landing your effects. Uh, Kaimen is really, really strong also in the battle phase. Uh, one really good play you can do with this deck is like uh, you can set up a unaffected black rose because your field spell makes all your fire dragons unaffected during the main phase one so you can actually like if you have sangin summoning enough to make black rose and you have sangin kaiman in hand uh like there's a lot of scenarios this is like one of my favorite lines to do with the deck pretty simple stuff but basically you have sangin summoning you summon black rose they literally the black rose is unaffected so they can't really negate it and uh you just get a guaranteed field wipe and from there you can go to battle phase activate kaiman kaiman since it's, a, it's the battle phase will search chundra special it go to battle swing and you know you get the effect of summon from deck quick effect synchro make joe biden joe biden bring back a monster you know you get to do a lot from here so obviously just looking at the deck list is not going to give you a deck profile but that's the general game plan of it it's it's actually pretty simple like uh, one of the easier decks to play for sure in master duel and i think this is going to be a very welcoming deck for a lot of newcomers and because i think this deck would be really welcoming to newcomers i do want to point out there are free Yu-Gi-Oh simulators out there and it's really not right <laughs> that Konami is dropping an archetype with this many in archetype URs, making it pretty much inaccessible for most new players that are getting into the game and like building a deck that they like and then realizing that that's not good enough in ladder and then they want to build a good deck and it's like, whoa, if they just had Tenpai, if they could have built Tenpai, you know somewhat reliably this could have been a really really good entry point for a lot of returning or new players it's also like a lot of fun to play uh and it's somewhat simple you know so uh, i feel like it had a lot of appeal to people that don't like the super long-winded combos and stuff like that so i do feel like it's a missed opportunity it is what it is you know and uh, you know obviously i freaking invested in it i put a bunch of gems i dismantled a bunch of cards for it but i do want to point out you know it is really annoying that konami is seemingly just like gem creeping every new deck and they're just making the decks more and more expensive as time goes on so it's pretty frustrating to see that and i do want to call it out before i start glazing how much i love tenpai you know what i mean so uh so yeah don't spend your money on this game not worth it but you know if you do i'm not your boss anyway enough yapping sorry i'm just i'm just all over the place today uh let's just go do some live gameplay i guess yeah because i feel like we can probably get like a pretty standard game here uh we win the coin flip so that's ideal that's ideal so that we can show a standard duel we're gonna pick second and it's a if it's a, like a wombo combo deck we'll probably just skip the combo and i'll just like tell you what it is after so let's see what it is let's see what we're playing against up here we have shifter i mean we're gonna start with a shifter for sure and uh, to be fair, I guess I'll stick around until I used up all my hand traps. So we're going to start off with Shifter. I like to shotgun stuff and play into um, Gamma just so I don't play into Triple Tactics Talents. Because oftentimes this deck can be not the most consistent. You'll have like a lot of staples and like one starter. And if they go Talents, you could just lose from that alone. So my opponent just set two cards here. They're passing. We draw into Genroku. Uh, this is not bad. Let's see. I'm going to try to bait something out here with Doradora. 
Let's see how it goes. If it's like a back row deck, we might be doing decent here. All right, so far so good. We can add Genroku to hand. Genroku uh, behaves like a poplar. So when it's added to hand, you get to special summon it from the hand here. Very good. Um, sure, doesn't really matter because we're just going to use his effect here. He can tribute himself. We can summon from the deck uh, our, our uh, Pydra. So we're going to summon out the Pydra here. And let's see if we can bait something out with the Pydra instead. No? Okay. So at this point, we get to grab our Sengen Summoning. Uh, yeah, sure, we can set it on field. All right, perfect. So we can go Sengen Summoning here. That's great. And at this point, we can activate Chundra to special summon it. Mm -hmm. Now we're under Shifter, so that means that Biden doesn't work, right? Because Joe Biden special summons from the grave. Usually you use the Biden to go into a level 10 synchro, but here we cannot do that. Um, instead, I would opt to... Oh, well, we're playing into back row here. Um, I'm just going to opt to go to battle phase straight up. And try to bait out some stuff here and see what it is. If it's battle traps, I haven't seen a single battle trap yet. So maybe this is the one time that I get wobble coot or something. But uh, we'll see. Yeah. If I had a way to get to... Um, to... Uh, the flash spell i would have went for that instead but since i couldn't get to the flash spell i couldn't because i would have liked to do the black rose line here but since i couldn't get to the flash spell, i didn't feel like it was really worth it uh, i'll just move a fodra out of the deck even though it, i can't get its effect this turn because we're under shifter we're just going to try to swing a couple of times here see what happens they have like a bestial they could definitely just like bestial away our shifter so we're going to keep swinging so far, looking like a pretty standard game for this deck, to be completely honest with you. Yep. And now we can go for Chundra. If they have... Okay, no response to Chundra. Um, honestly, we could probably just summon the Transcendent and call it a day at this point. Instead of, like, giving ourselves a headache. Basically, as soon as you drop this level 10 Synchro, this dude just stops your opponent from activating anything in the battle phase. So, like, if you're there, you know, yeah. So, okay, that's as standard as it gets, I would say, for this deck. I don't know if I'll do much more live gameplay because a lot of your replays or your games are going to look a lot like this. Uh, we were under shifter, so that did change the line a little bit, but nothing too crazy. So, I guess I, now I can show you some interesting niche scenarios. Like, I could maybe show you going uh, first against Tenpai. That could be interesting. So, we're going to go check that out. By the way, I just checked and we got pretty lucky because uh, our opponent was on Altergeist. I'm really surprised that we were up against Altergeist and they did not have enough to set to, like, do anything. That's really surprising. Anyway, I just, I thought, I did not expect to see Altergeist. I thought I, I, thought I was playing against a Tenpai player uh, in that last game. But anyway, um... Let's move on to that replay. All right, so here we have a game where my opponent is making me go first. And uh, one thing that's interesting about Tenpai is they're actually quite fragile. So even if I'm not running a lot of cards for going first, the very, like, you know, basic setup that we get going first with Tenpai in my build is usually good enough sometimes, if they don't have, like, the nuts, to actually beat Tenpai, uh, even if you're going first. So that's why I don't really like ideas like running heat wave because that's a dead card if you get second which is what you want to get i don't like running cards that go against what i want to pick uh so you know here i go doka search genroku special genroku activate shifter summon out pydra from the deck pydra can search kaimen i have two copies of kaimen so i can activate one of them and we're going to search a chundra here so now i can go activate chundra special summon the chundra use these two over here to go into heretic seal of the heavenly sphere and basically, I feel like going first, one of the best setups you can really have, because most of the time, if you're going first, that means your opponent made you go first, which means it's extremely likely that you're playing against Tenpai, right? So I feel like if you have uh, Sangen Kaimen set for the battle phase, that is extremely valuable, uh, just because, you know, it can make it so at least, you know, you can like force a grind game potentially in the battle phase by using your quick synchro effects. And then, obviously, the Heretic Seal has a lot of good applications in Tenpai. Like, uh, if they don't have the field spell first, then you can, like, potentially bounce a monster that could be useful, like their special summoned Chundra. Or, if they do have the field spell and they choose to search with it, you can just use the Heretic Seal to bounce that. And also, you'll get a summon of a Tenpai monster from your deck at that point. So, that can be super valuable as well, because if they want to go to battle phase to deal with your stuff, then they will have to contend with it. Now, there are plays around this, like you saw earlier. Um, my opponent 
potentially could just make the Sangen Pai Transcendent Dragon if uh, if they can get to it uh, before the battle phase. And at that point, I would be in trouble for sure. So it's not like a end all be all, but I just felt like, you know, against Tenpai, I have Imperm, I have Ash, I have Kaimen for battle phase. Uh, if they swing, you know, we get the Chundra effect to summon from deck. Like I felt pretty secure here. Not amazing. Like doesn't mean I'm guaranteed to win. It just means that I, I feel like, you know, there's a chance here. They start off with Harpy's Feather Duster, so we're, we're going to let go of Imperm, but we're going to chain Kaimen, and we're going to search Genroku. Of course, Genroku has the Poplar effect, so that's why we search Genroku here. We get the special out of the Genroku from the hand at this point, so special Genroku. They're going to normal Pydra. Here, I kind of took a chance. My logic here was like, if they're summoning Pydra first, that's telling me they probably don't have the field spell, and yeah, they might have the flash spell, but if they go flash spell... Um, I could potentially just bounce their Chundra if they choose to go to battle phase. And if they chose to like go uh, Biden Dragon first and then bring back Chundra, for example, then honestly, I could just take the hit from the Biden Dragon and bounce the Chundra. So my logic here for that is why I'm going to just Ash the Pydra and just assume that, you know, they don't have the field spell and because you know the field spell makes them infected if they had the field spell they would activate it first that's like my logic basically and then in end phase i am going to go for the heretic seal bounce summon out the magnamut magnamut is going to search pydra there's a really cool line with magnamut that i don't get to show you in this replay because we already use both of our uh, gen rokus but magnamut can search gen roku and then in the end phase you basically get like a pydra set up for like a field spell or a flash spell so uh, magnamut is actually super super good in this deck but yeah here i basically just did this so that i can make a baron at the start of my turn for one of these back rows and then summon my pydra and be a little bit more uh, safe you know uh, but we did draw into harpy's feather duster so i guess we're just better right so anyway here's baron i'm gonna go for feather duster they're gonna chain the droplet here and, you know, they're just going to negate everything I have on field, which I don't really mind. Like, I feel pretty good at this point because, you know, there's not really much they can do if I just go Pydra here. So I'm going to activate Pydra. We're going to search for the Kaimen so I can just use it in the battle phase. In battle phase, I'm going to activate Kaimen. In battle phase, Kaimen gets two effects. He gets to search and then summon a Tenpai. So we can summon the Fadra, go into Sangenpai, Joel Biden. Biden, bring back the Fadra. Fadra effect can special from Grave on summon or during an attack. So we bring back the Chundra. We swing a little bit, you know. We get the Fadra quick effect to Synchro. Uh, during the battle phase make ourselves a transcendent dragon don't have to think about any effects anymore for this battle phase during the damage step we can activate chundra to summon from deck and then we're just gonna swing for game you know nothing too crazy but you know that's going first against tenpai i think it was you know a, i mean a decent showing right like i mean obviously my opponent probably didn't draw the nuts and if they did draw the nuts then we might have been in more trouble and uh while we're speaking about you know going first with tenpai and heat wave and all this stuff I do want to mention, I really don't think it's correct to run Heatwave or cards that are like specifically for going first in your deck when you're building Tenpai. I mean, I get the idea. It's like, well, if I'm playing against Tenpai, they make me go first. I go Heatwave and then I just win. And well, okay, maybe sometimes that'll be true, but not necessarily all the time. Uh, your hands are more likely to be bricked with cards that don't really do anything for you if you have a bunch of going first cards just in case. And you're always picking going second, right? So I feel like you should build for going second. Even if you lose the coin flip, you have to also be facing a Tenpai opponent to then be made to go first. So it's not like it's never going to happen, but it's not going to happen every single time that you lose a coin flip. There's a bunch of variety in ladder right now because there's a bunch of really good ways to counter Tenpai going first. And because Tenpai is always going to make you go first, a lot of people are choosing to build decks that are a bit more ceiling focused. You know, they'll run like a Protoss or, you know, they'll have like a boss monster that turns off the battle phase or, you know, like in Math Mech, that, that Link 5. Uh, so, you know, a lot of the time people want to go first against Tenpai if they know what they're doing. Uh, and similarly, I really don't think you should be running cards in case you go first when you are playing Tenpai. I feel like you should be really focusing on going second. Don't want to ramble on that too much, but let me just exemplify what I'm talking about here. Uh, we're playing against Mr. Toes over here. Going Heatwave turn one, so I can't summon for the turn, right? So I'm just going to set my Genroku and set my Droplet. Droplet, by the way, I think is insane this format and just an incredible card like i feel like with this massive meta switch it'd be a really good time probably to make a, an updated staples tier list actually because uh, i don't know how high i put it last time but 
probably not as high as I would put it right now. I think this card is like damn near must play. Really good against Tenpai, really good in Tenpai, really good uh, against a bunch of different decks. It's just such a crazy card right now in Master Duel. But anyway, let's keep going here. So obviously can't summon. My opponent is bricked because they're running these goofy cards for going first in a Tenpai deck. So they go Heat Wave again. I get to flip my Genroku. And here, basically, my idea was I'll flip my Genroku since I can't normal or special summon monsters, and I'll pass turn. And on my opponent's turn, I could like summon a Chundra during the battle phase to at least get a summon uh, of like a Fodra or something to protect from battle, and then potentially get into synchro plays and stuff like that. Um, that's not gonna turn out the way I wanted, but you know, we still have Droplet, we have Maxi, we have Ash. Like this is like Tenpai is fragile, you know. Tenpai, you really need all your cards to be high impact stuff because the deck is fragile. So here they're going to go Dark Hole. I decide to just deck thin here and summon Fadra to let them pop it just because I would like to draw into a Pydra or into a, uh, you know, a uh, Chundra. So as soon as they activate Chundra here, I'm going to chain Maxi just to get some potential draws. They're going to summon out the Chundra here. And uh, yeah, just Droplet alone in Battle Phase here. We can just go Droplet, discard two negate both of these guys we drew into sangin summoning so now we have a starter for next turn you know we're basically set uh they're gonna go into a heretic seal of the heavenly spheres which is totally respectable but it's now turn six in tenpai and i'm only playing going second cards so i'm gonna win <laughs> i'm gonna win you know what i mean so I really highly recommend, even though it seems on paper really cool to go Heat Wave in case your opponent makes you go first, I think it's not optimal deck building. I wouldn't recommend it. I, I say focus on going second and just accept that you're not going to win absolutely every game. Sometimes you're going to lose a coin flip and uh, a 10 pie player will make you go first and they're going to have the nuts. Sometimes you're going to go second, you're going to pick going second, and your opponent is going to go Protoss, call fire, and you're, you're just not going to be able to play and you're going to get destroyed by all their interruptions. Like, that's just the reality. You're still going to be getting fast wins and fast losses with this deck. It's a lot faster pace to climb ladder than a lot of decks have been in the past couple of formats. So I, th I think it's, it's a fair trade-off, honestly. I, I don't think you should be like, you know... Um, weakening your deck's main game plan uh just for like niche scenarios where someone makes you go first or something like that and just to drive the point home here i'm just going to show you another game where like uh i'm going first against 10 pi well this one's even faster and uh we have way less interruption than we did in the last one so i just go for a kaimen you know they're going to ash my kaimen we have chundra and droplet right and that's literally enough that is literally enough a and ash to be fair um, that's how fragile Tenpai is, you know? So they're going to go Imperm here. They're going to Imperm my Chundra. They're going to summon Genroku, then Special Chundra, activate Genroku. I'm going to Ash the Genroku here. And then basically all they need to do is go to Battle Phase and activate Chundra and summon Fadra from the deck and all that stuff. My monster is negated. So I get to go Droplet, negate Chundra after they already, de already declared the attack. So their monster is going to be destroyed. It's negated, you know, so they're just crashing, destroying their own monster. On my own turn, I could just swing with Chundra summon from the deck, pop off. And just like that, literally Chundra pass with one set droplet and one ash in hand beat Tenpai here. So that's really like that's to drive the point home. Like, I don't think I really don't think you need to be running cards in your deck in case a Tenpai player makes you go first. It's honestly kind of just win more and won't even make you win every time. Now, I think the last thing we'll do before doing card by card is just show some combos and stuff like different lines. Nothing too crazy, just like important combo lines that I didn't get a replay for. So uh, let's do that. All right, so we're just going second against the bot here. Basically, what I want to show you is just the Black Rose line, like the unaffected Black Rose line, because it's a pretty damn important line. Now, to be fair, you won't necessarily like if one of these cards removes Pydra, for example, while I have Chundra or Kaiman, that's not necessarily the line I'll be going for. So it would depend here if I go Pydra and Pydra doesn't get hit. Okay, it doesn't get hit. We can add the Sangin Summoning. We can set it to the field to play around Droll. Uh, then we can activate the Sangin Summoning. And at this point, basically all our Fire Dragons on the field are unaffected, right? We already have Kaiman in hand. So since we have Kaiman and uh, Pydra in hand, we get to do this combo. Um, obviously, we already have Chundra, but technically if you didn't, you would just like use the field spell here. You would search Chundra and discard a card. So we'll search Chundra. Uh, and I'll just like discard Shifter because I didn't use it. I just wanted to show the Black Rose line. So here, you know, you would search the Chundra. You would special it. And yeah, that's about it. Now, basically, like whatever your opponent has on the field, your your monsters are unaffected if this card is sticking the landing. So if Sangin Summoning is staying on the field, you can very easily go for a Black Rose Dragon here. And obviously here we're playing against the bot with two cards. But this, 
this will like destroy so many boards where you can literally just do this and you go black rose black rose is unaffected because sang and summoning is currently face up on the field so everything gets destroyed and they can't stop the black rose right um it's extremely valuable and the reason for that is because then you can just go battle phase activate kaimen search chundra and you just win from there so you add chundra to hand because it's a battle phase kaimen also gets to special summon it so you special summon that chundra swing with chundra you get to activate chundra's effect to summon from the deck here uh you can summon i would say a fadra here since you have already a pydra in the grave uh you don't use the effect you so you know you do a swing you swing again uh you don't activate and then you can activate the effect of chundra and what's cool here is if they had like imperm or something uh you could just chain this effect after their imperm to still synchro anyway uh, so we get to go into our biden tier so go joel biden and from there like it's pretty simple right like i mean this deck is very very straightforward i'm just showing you very basic lines like just to make sure that you have them in your repertoire because these are very important so here you would bring back fadra and then fadra can bring back again your chundra from the graveyard so bring back the chundra you know there we go got a couple more swings in us and I, I think this is already lethal yeah it is yeah so you know pretty simple stuff if you want to be flashy I mean like obviously we could just swing for game here but if you want to be flashy and get a nice animation you could always just do this and summon the big boy you know and uh now they couldn't even activate an effect in the battle phase if they could you know what I mean so uh yeah there you go easy money right uh, also, you have that quick effect to special summon the uh, Biden from the grave and pop a back row if ever that comes up. So, yeah, very basic, very simple line. I just wanted to show it. And I guess the last thing I'll show is the 6,000 swing three times. Again, this is all stuff you've most likely seen if you've just played Master Duel today. But I'll just, you know, I'll just make sure that the video is somewhat all inclusive of the basics of the deck. So we're going to do that now. All right. So we have Pydra here and we could easily set up the field spell with Pydra. But we're going to pretend that we didn't just just to like make the line somewhat a little bit harder. So let's just say we normal summon Fadra uh, and we didn't have Pydra in hand, you know, then you could like special Chundra from hand here. And uh, you could just go to battle phase and uh, it, it doesn't really make the line much harder, but it's just to show, you know, like you could swing with this and then at the damage step, you get to activate Chundra and you get to summon Pydra here instead, you know, so summon Pydra. And then Pydra can set the field spell on the field. And that's good enough to get the uh, the crazy OTK. So you want to set it on the field. Say yes. Say yes. And uh, yeah, so we swing a little bit here. We do a little bit of damage, you know. Nothing too crazy. Get a little bit of damage in. Very cool. Then we can go ahead and activate our Chundra. Uh, go into Joel Biden. So we're going to make our Biden here. Very cool. Joel Biden hits the field. Now we can go for Biden Dragon, bring back Fadra, bring back Chundra from the grave. And very simple stuff here. I mean, honestly, this, it doesn't get much more simple than this deck in a lot of ways. Uh, I guess like if you really, really want to insulate yourself, you could. Like if you're like worried about, I don't know, some monster effects or something. Like if you're worried, worried about a Mahama, let's say, you could just do this and summon out like Meteor Burst, right? Uh, so where is it? Here it is. Yeah, you could summon like a meteor burst if you wanted to here using your Chundra and your Pydra. Now they can't use monster effects in the battle phase, you know. Um, it's like a weaker version of the uh, the uh, Sangen Pai level 10 synchro. And then at that point, you know, they can't use monster effects. You can go for Fadra. Uh, you make yourself a Trident Dragion and you can just pop your field spell. You'll get two swings of 6,000. Uh, if you pop another card, you would get a third swing. Uh, but we only get to swing once anyway, right? So let's not lose our minds over it. It's like another card. No, we'll just pop that. Um, and then, yeah, so we get to use the graveyard effect of Sangin Summoning, double the attack of Trident. Trident gains an extra attack because it popped one card. And we can even go Sangin Pai, Biden Tier, Summon it, and uh, pop the back row since we already attacked three times or more. So get rid of that and uh, just, you know, clean it up. So I could have swung twice there, you know, if there was monsters to deal with. Uh, that's going to come up quite a bit, you know, like once you've like basically dealt with most threats and there's just kind of like some hollow bodies left on the field, you might want to just like crash into a bunch of them uh, with 6,000 attack and call it a day. So uh, I think that's going to be about it. We're going to go check out the card by card and I'll talk to you a bit about like 
the deck and uh, my theory for it and why I'm running certain things and not running others and uh, where I think, you know, you might want to change the deck to your preference. So let's go do that. Here we are for the card by card. And yeah, I, I really do got to say, I had a lot of fun playing this today, like a lot more fun than I, well, to be fair, I had a lot of fun recently with Gen X. So that's not really true. I had a ton of fun with Gen X, but um, yeah, this deck is pretty refreshing for me and I kind of like the way it's changing up the format. Basically, it, it just means going first decks are put, pushing their ceiling even further because their odds of going first are a lot higher with Tenpai running around and picking second. So you like want to make your going first turn as crazy as possible. And then you have Tenpai, which is a deck where it's like, okay, did I draw enough like hand traps and staples that I can win? And uh, if we're here, just going to talk about the first card here. Yeah, Maxi is obviously crazy, but in this deck in particular, Maxi feels even more insane. Obviously, this is the case for most decks, but especially for Tenpai, it's like if Maxi resolves, your odds of losing are so freaking low because you'll like almost always draw into Droplet with a couple of solid discards to make it unrespondable. Uh, and yeah, you, you can just kind of go from there. Uh, so Maxi has been super crazy. Not to mention, I often draw it with Shifter, which is so stupid. Like I can go Shifter, Chain Maxi. So yeah, Maxi has been insane. Uh, uh, the Ash is like the most questionable of the hand traps, I would say. It's the one I'm most iffy about. I like it and it's been decisive in a lot of games. But as you can see, I'm not running Ghost Ogre and I would like to run Ghost Ogre because I think it's quite good this format. But I'm not super confident about removing Ash. Like, it's just, it's come up too much. It's honestly quite good against Tenpai in a lot of scenarios. Not always, but, like, paired up with other cards, it's usually a really strong effect that can, like, be the deciding factor in a lot of different matchups. So, I kind of don't feel comfortable removing it, but also, I don't think it's necessary. I think this is kind of a flex spot, like a, a hand trap you can replace. Obviously, you run the three Pydra. This is your main searcher. Searches either your field spell or your flash spell, and it can set it or add it to hand super insane card you can play around droll like come on um fadra i ended up running at two i thought i would only run one fadra but the more i thought about it it just feels like fadra because sometimes you do get into these grind games with this deck especially in the mirror match uh and having the second fadra can definitely come up at times and it's definitely nice to have so uh i'm definitely happy with two the second fadra has come up like like a good amount of times and then i'm also running two genroku and two dora dora um genroku is a really good search off of your one of magnamut it's a really good search off of your sangen kaimen on opponent's turn if they activate like a board breaker to wipe your back row you at least get this summon to then like go into a fadra potentially and just set up some monsters in case you go to battle phase so you can do some quick synchros um and then dora dora uh basically you normal summon dora 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 searches the uh, genroku and then you know you can use genroku to fetch any different tenpai you want with the quick effect tribute summon any tenpai from the deck so it's a really strong normal summon potentially the second maybe the second best normal summon in the deck honestly um but you know you don't want to run too many engine cards in this deck you really want a lot of really strong staples so i wouldn't run more than two at least not right now but i do like it at two uh, three copies of Chundra. Obviously, this is like, for, first of all, it's a really strong extender. Uh, on its own, it's insanely good too, just because, you know, you can summon it off of Kaimen in the battle phase. And, you know, like, like I, like I showed you earlier, if you wipe the board with like Black Rose, go for this. This is going to summon a Fadra. You can go into your Biden. Biden, bring back Fadra. Fadra, bring back the Chundra. And you're basically guaranteed lethal. Like, this card on its own is a shit ton of damage. So, uh, yeah. Chundra, absolutely a must run at three. You always want to see it in hand. You're always happy to see it in hand. Uh, two copies of Shifter. Shifter is just amazing. Obviously, right now, there's a ton of people playing Tenpai, so Shifter won't always have the impact you want it to have, but it's so easy to play in this deck. I see no reason not to play it. And uh, like when your opponent picks first and they're playing a deck that doesn't like Shifter, this card is going to go crazy. The Magnemut is a full combo, like turn one, technically, uh, if, if it comes up, you know, like obviously it's just a one of, but it's a really strong one of. Uh, oftentimes you can search Genroku, go Genroku in end phase, uh, since specials from the hand if it's searched and do that whole line. Or other times, you know, if you don't need it, you might just fetch a Padra in the grind game uh, to get a field spell or a flash spell or something like that on the next turn. But yeah, Magnumut is, you know, I really like it. At first, I wasn't sure about it, but yeah, it came up a bunch of times. It was super cool. Also, you can use it plus a Chundra to get like a quick back on on the field early into a turn or something like that if you need like a quick level 10 synchro. So yeah, I really, really like it. Uh, next up, I'm running one Harpy's Feather Duster and three Lightning Storm for like my big board breaking cards. Uh, I saw a lot of people running right geki and i don't think that's wrong at all actually uh it's just more so i guess it's like uh, 
it's it's up to what you prefer. I find that clearing back row is more important. Uh, and Droplet usually will deal with monsters really well. You know, I have Imperm to deal with monsters. Uh, and sometimes I'll pop monsters with Lightning Storm. But most of the time, really, what I care more about is clearing back row. This deck doesn't really like traps at all. That's why I'm running the reboot. If I had a second copy of reboot, this is probably the top hand trap. Like, I really want a second reboot, honestly. Um, but yeah, I really feel like we care a bit more about back row than monsters. Especially since, like, you know, we have uh, Meteor Burst here that will just stop monsters monster effects during the battle phase so if you can just you know plop down a meteor burst and you know you wiped their back row with lightning storm you're feeling pretty damn safe going into the battle phase at that point whereas there's really no like super easy option to deal with back row from your synchros generally speaking uh we have the one of Pro pot of prosperity uh most of the time i'm banishing my link package with this card and uh yeah, I mean, it's it's fine. You can definitely go for lethal under Pot of Prosperity. So Trident Dragon on his own can be like 9,000 damage under Pot of Prosperity if it's doing like three direct attacks. Not to mention you're swinging, swinging a bunch of times with different monsters. You can definitely get there pretty easily. Um, I don't love it. Honestly, it hasn't come up for me almost at all. It feels like the kind of card that once I remove it, I'll feel like, oh, if I had Pot of Prosperity here. But while I have it, I see it in my hand and I'm like, oh, this is probably getting discarded for Droplet. Or, oh, this is probably getting discarded for Sangin Summoning. But maybe I've just been lucky with my hands. Either way, I don't think it's a bad pick at all. Uh, I have, you know, the two Sangin Summoning. It's Misk. It's uh, a Searcher. It uh, doubles your attack of your Trident Dry. Like, it's just a crazy card. Um, two Called By. I do feel like this is... Honestly, I really like this card in the deck, and I think it's really, really good to run. It seems kind of weird to run this in a going second deck, but there's so... Like, this deck is very fragile, as you guys saw, so there's a lot of hand traps that you actually really want to deal with. Like, where you're, like, you're looking at your opponent's board, you're like, I can deal with this, but if they have an Ash, I might be cooked. Or, but if they have a Ghost Ogre, I might lose. So, I really, really like having Called by the Grave. Not to mention, there's certain cards that you need to deal with, such as Phantom of U Bell. Phantom of U Bell can negate your monsters even under the Sangin Summoning. So, I feel like Called by the Grave is really good to deal with cards such as that. Kind of a flex spot, I would say. Kind of a card that you can debate me on. Uh, I think this one you can't, Forbidden Droplet. It's just insane. It's just amazing. Um, so good. So good. Going first. Going first. Oftentimes, if I see Droplet and they, like a 10 pie player made me go first and I see Droplet, I'm like, okay, I have a decent chance here, you know? Because you guys saw earlier, like Droplet in battle phase against 10 pie is so good. It's so good. Especially if they declare Chundra attack. It's like, oh boy. Oh boy, you've got another one coming. Obviously, you have to wait uh, until the battle phase because they're unaffected uh, during the main phase one because of Sangin summoning. But still absolute must run uh same for sang and kaiman i mean i don't even need to explain this one it's a flash bell that searches and special summons during the battle phase or you can just search in the main phase if you need to for the consistency so uh this is also a card like if you can set this turn one uh you know most of the time almost all the time actually if you're going first it means you're playing against tenpai and at that point if you can just go sang and kaiman at the battle at the start of the battle phase you know you can just you know get into your synchro plays and potentially at least set up a meteor burst so that they can't activate a bunch of monster effects now most likely it's not going to be that simple you know like it, it gets pretty complicated i would say uh when you're having a, a little bit of a tussle a battle phase where both of us are trying to synchro summon uh but yeah i would definitely say sang and kaiman is insane uh three copies of imperm i really like this card because it's both a hand trap and it's a board breaker so i think imperm just makes a ton of sense in this deck and i already talked about red reboot crazy card when i draw it usually comes up honestly because most decks set up at least like one trap or at least going first i'll set like an imperm or two and then for the extra deck i already showed you the black rose line very essential odd eyes meteor burst dragon is like a easier to summon version of this dude it only stops your opponent from activating monster effects during the battle phase so it's not as good at all as uh, the sangin pie but just being able to summon a level 7 synchro is really easy in this deck so you know you don't have to invest as many resources into summoning this guy so in some scenarios if you feel safe enough and you don't you're not really worried about imperm or anything like that then i think it makes a ton of sense to go meteor burst uh and you know just like go for game with that you'll feel pretty safe and pretty insulated with that alone a uh, samurai destroyer is basically here because it deals with you bell uh because like it negates their effects uh it stops your opponent from activating effects and negates the monster it's attacking until the end of the damage step at which point uh you bell has basically like uh, left the window of opportunity to activate the graveyard effect of Ubel after destruction, and they also don't get to activate Spirit of Ubel in hand when you're swinging with that uh, Samurai Destroyer. So, 
really good card overall. I would say like if you can pair up a Samurai Destroyer and a Sangen Pie into U Bell, you're feeling pretty good, but you still have a lot to deal with. So it's definitely one of your tougher matchups. Don't get me wrong, really, really tough matchup overall. I definitely underestimated it when I made my uh, predictive tier list recently. So that one's definitely going to be moving up when I make the actual tier list. Um, Biden is like, this is like your Shishao, right? Like this is like your bread and butter insane synchro brings back a monster from the grave can summon itself back from the grave and pop a back row which is really useful as well it's just an insane card honestly uh trident you already saw uh ruddy rose ruddy rose is more of a tech option being able to just deal with a graveyard completely like just removing the graveyard can come up in a lot of different matchups i would i wouldn't say it's like an absolute must play if you don't have it but you'll feel better with it probably uh baron comes up here and there i like baron obviously oftentimes because of the uh, biden you get dragon locked so you won't always be able to make it but Bahan does come up here and there and it's a nice card to have access to uh this one is amazing just shuts down all effects during the battle phase only for your opponent super crazy card uh striker dragon comes up in scenarios where like for example uh if you got like a special or something or a monster left over in the grind game uh you could like potentially link away a negated Pydra from last turn into a Striker Dragon, then summon Fadra, bring back Pydra, get to trigger Pydra again. It's pretty nice. Striker is definitely better when you're running SP, right? Uh, and I do kind of want to add her. We'll talk about that pretty soon. Basically, the purpose of this little link package here, you know, the, the like Promethean Princess OTK, it's mostly here in case your opponent uh, goes for Dimensional Barrier. I find it like way too many spots though for just one card. This has not come up for me once. I mostly just banish it off of Prosperity when I use Prosperity, which also doesn't come up super often. Not super confident in it. Kind of want to remove it and replace it with more toolbox synchros and just throw in potentially an SP. Either way, all I'm saying is not a massive fan of this link package because it hasn't come up but i'm sure once it comes up i'll be like oh my god i'm so glad i had this and uh we'll finish it off here with heretic seal i mean heretic seal is just an absolute must play card dude it is such an insane card and uh i've won a bunch of games against tenpai going first with just this seal and like a set imperm or an ash or a set droplet and kaiman and stuff like that so definitely it's good enough, dude. It's good enough. You don't need you don't need uh heat heat what's it called? Heat wave. Cards like this, they're silly. Don't run this. You don't need this. You do not need this. Um, that's gonna be it for this video. And uh I might talk about this deck a bit more. You know, I might I might update my list eventually and uh talk about it a bit more. I really I'm just having a good time with it. I know a lot of people hate this deck. Personally, I feel like it's getting a bit too much flack, but you know, it is what it is. That's Yu-Gi-Oh! at the end of the day. And uh, yeah, it's the new meta thing, right? So people are not too happy about it. It's cool with me though. I like it. I'm enjoying it. I'm having fun with it. I can't wait to stream more of it. And yeah, you guys have a good one. All right.